All right, we'll mute ourselves. Okay. Oh, I love this. It puts you right in the middle of my screen. Okay, right. good. <laughs> and you guys can hear me okay? Perfect. Good. You're going to have to bear with me because I'm not sure when I try to show you guys things, I'll turn my camera around so you can, uh, and I'll try to move slowly so at least you can tell and if anybody's got questions, they can ask. Just let me know when um, when you're comfortable and if you, you want me to start, because I'm fine to wait a few minutes if you want to wait and if other people are jumping on. Well, right now we have about 25 people in this room. Okay. So whenever you're ready and the whole thing's recording anyway. So <laughs> good. Oh, okay. All right. So that's fine. So I, I don't mind starting. Okay. So good morning, everybody. How are you? I uh, hope you are well. And... Um, I guess doing the best that you can under the circumstances. Uh, as you can see with the mask on my face as well as, and in what I will show you around, um, we are adapting here as well. Normally in the control environment, I wanna say there's about 10, if not 12 to 13 people in the room, um, but they basically knocked it down to, I wanna say we have about five, uh, one, two, three, four, I think about five people now, uh, essential. Um, other people have been uh, remotely put into other parts of the building, technical uh, uh, aspects, uh, Chiron, Prompter, other things like that are coming from different rooms. And um, so now we just have uh, uh, the technical director, the director, uh, two producers, uh, myself, and I think that's it in this room. Uh, audio engineer is usually in another room anyway, so he's separated, but um, let me see if I can do this that you guys can see properly. So this is my workstation. Um, usually I have two monitors. The top, uh, the top monitor with you know, the green and the red is usually uh, where we, I, when I go through the rundown in the morning. And I don't know if you can see this. Please tell me if, you, if I need to move it to the left or the right. When I go through the rundown in the morning, I'll go through and, and check the show. Um, the show that I work on is, is one of the two shows that's about three hours long. So we go through a three hour period and I, I work with the producers and trying to make sure that everything that they need is in. So this way then there's no issues later on. And then I create kind of an overview um, here in terms of where to find information for different people. So it's, you know, the IFB for the audio engineer, maybe the RS for the director and the TD, the REMS or, or other, um, information for not just but for also for the transmission department as well as uh, Mac ingest when they want to roll on ISOs for of guests um, so and use over the course of the show if it's green you go they're good if it's red stop and not good so we, we try to kind of keep up on that and you may be able to see throughout the control room uh, different monitors there there over by the TD position you'll see it kind of placed so this way everyone can kind of see when I make a change on the, on the sheet, and actually in the audio engineer, he's got one too. You can kind of see just kind of how things work in terms of it's kind of a visual. Instead of having out a paper sheet, this way then I, I email it to everybody and everybody has it in front of them. Um, but uh, this is kind of the setup of the control room. Over to the right there is where the TD sits. The director used to sit right next to him, but now he's kind of placed in the, in the middle. And then the uh, producer here, producer here, over to the right. And then I sit here. So we're all kind of spread out across the room. And then the wall is kind of configured. Each room, we have, I think, five control rooms, two mainly that we use. I'll turn this around so you can see me again. We have two main control rooms that we switch back and forth. Um, this is control two. So usually we start the first show, first hour in PCR one. Um, and then we rotate with each show. So this way then it's kind of a seamless thing. Um, so we go through uh, uh, Worldwide Exchange is the first hour, 5 a.m. At 6 a.m. we start, we go till nine. So we're in the chair pretty much for the, the entire three hours. Um, yeah, during a lunch, uh, not a lunch, a, um, a, a break for maybe two minutes, one of us will have to run to the bathroom or something like that just to take a quick two minutes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's just really, it's it's uh, it's that, that kind of simple. I mean, this here. I mean, 
when I started, I started at the desk. Um, I, I started off really, actually, I didn't go to school for TV. Um, I actually uh, went to school for film and I worked on some small independent films and stuff like that. And through a connection, uh, basically someone who knew somebody who knew somebody, I was able to get in as a kind of a trial and sit at the desk. And I was uh, scheduling crews and trucks. So anytime a reporter would have a question, they would come to me. Hey, we need to send a crew here because I have an interview. Um, and then um, from there, I worked there for about almost three years. From there, when we moved from what was called the old building to this building, they needed some help. Uh, and I had I can go one of two ways. I can go into booking or I, I, I wanted the more technical angle. So I went into transmission, which basically it's kind of the nervous center of the building. And basically all the feeds that come into the building from around the world come in through transmission. And then from there it gets either checked, QC, make sure they're good before they go to either tape live into the control room or something else. So that's where I was for about almost 10 years. And I kind of got a good handle of that. Um, from there, I came into now, I've been in this position, I want to say four or five, actually, maybe it's about five years, or maybe longer. God, it's, I lose uh, track, but um, basically, so now I'm a technical production supervisor. So basically, everything that I've learned between the desk to transmission to this it kind of has kind of been upstream, it, it, you know, and it's kind of led to this point. So I know everything that goes on behind me. So anytime a producer has a technical question, I, everything comes through me. Uh, a director or somebody else, most of the director and the, and the other people I work with have been here for a long time or know kind of what goes on. But if somebody's got a question, I try to answer it in the best way I can, only because I've worked in those positions and I know how feeds come into the building and I know what technical issues can ha uh, occur. And um, so usually um, everything kind of comes through me to come into the building before it goes up into what's called an RS, the remote source. It, if it's not there, it can't go live to air. So it, it, everything kind of has to come through me. Um, but every, but it kind of the buck stops with me to make sure that, let's say everyone's got their own kind of um, feel for things and touch for things. And I'm gonna just take this off only because it's getting challenging and there's nobody in the room. Um, so, Everyone's got their kind of uh, uh, a feel for the iris of the camera or the, the sound or, or something along those lines. So when everything gets passed to me, usually I'll QC it just a little bit more. I've got a QC station here with a scope. Uh, let's see if you can see this a little bit. QC station here with a scope uh, here. This is usually where it tells me in terms of video and the blacks and the reds, uh, the magentas, yellows, et cetera. This here is a computer that all it basically everything that comes into us is through a frame sync there's basically it's about the size of a um like a a, a a dvd player and basically every line that comes in goes through a decoder and then through that decoder it's it's set up on a frame sync and so they're all given our rems or which are remote sources and they're all listed here and we have hundreds of them coming into the building so from there i can actually click into if i need to I don't, can you, are you able to see this okay? And I can click into this if I need to, and I'll just pick this at random to uh, REM 310. And so that here I can control the video source, the process, it's a GUI system. The video processing, I can control the, all the gain. Um, I can control the blacks, the hues to the left or to the right, whether it's red or, or anything else like that, the chroma. So I can control that or I can control the audio output or the, actually this doesn't have, you know, let me pick a different, one more source, just because you can control the audio as well. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see, which one am I in? Oh, here, let's do this. So when you get into one of these, you can control the audio, the audio processing. You can control the left or the right channel. Actually we have multiple channels, but we, we, we usually just control the right or the left or channels one and ch channels two. Now we can go through multiple channels here if we, if we use them. Right now we don't use them. Um, if let's say there's a delay in the audio to the video, then we do the best that we can to try and get it as close as possible before it goes live to air. And we can think we can, if you know that 33 frames per second 
um, you can, you know, that, and you can, you can delay this by 33 or 66, et cetera. You know, it depends on what your, what the, what, if, how bad, how off it is. Uh, or audio, the audio engineer can fix it in the control, in, in his audio booth. So, um, you know, these are some of the things that, you know, I was with the path that I took and it wasn't a path that I had planned. It actually kind of helped prepare me for everything that I do now. Um, so I, I guess that, you know, that's one of the things that I would, I would say that um, whatever you're learning uh, is great. I think it's fantastic because anything that you can do to make yourself more valuable um, helps. So, you know, if you're lucky enough to get your foot in the door somewhere, always be open-minded enough to say, you know, or if you have a break, you know, a two or three hour break between you're covering, um, you know, whether it's Chiron or whether you're covering um, jib or whether you're covering uh, prompter, if you've got a couple of hours between shifts or something, it's always, you know, if, if you, you know, connect with other people around you and say, hey, listen, you know, um, that looks really, you know, interesting while I'm in the building and I've got a break, can I just kind of shadow you for a little bit? And you learn it and, you, and I tell you, it, 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 it takes you and makes you more valuable. Um, and it, in the long run, it just, it just makes, uh, it makes you better. And, and it, it, um, it makes you more valuable. People, you, 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 they know they can kind of shift you around at the positions and, and you do, um, you know, they, you'll get hired more, um, especially when it comes to, hey, you know, you're not just known as the prompter person. Hey, you know, prompter, well, what happens if Chiron's out? What happens if, if the play, playback person is out? What happens if, if, you know what, he also does audio? Well, he also does this. Anything you can do to make yourself more valuable is, is just that much more. So as I said, I came into the building just working the desk and, and knowing all the camera, you know, crews and, and dealing with the truck. And, and I actually went on shoots. I dealt with the camera. I worked with the head engineer of the camera. So this way I got to know when the iris is open, when the iris is closed too much, when it's too hot too, when the audio, Hey, well, how do you fix these things? What that, then it took me that actually, I was able to take all of that and then take it into transmission. So when I was QCing shots coming into the building, I can talk the cameraman through it. Many times, you deal with people who have been in the business for 20 years or whatever. And they're like, no, no, this is the way it's done. I get it. But I'm telling you what I'm seeing and I need you to trust me and what I'm doing. And you, the only way that you build that trust is by, by working with people and, and dealing with that. So I was able to take what I learned at the desk, take it to transmission, build up more technical background, and then be able to, to take that. And also, uh, you know, when I come into the, and now into here, into the, into the position I'm in now, I'm able to work with audio. I'm able to work with the TD and work together with them. Hey, can you fix this? Not a problem. I don't have to go, hey, transmission, can you do this? I can do it myself because I know what I'm doing. So I, I would say that if you're able to do that, that's great. So, you know, with whatever you guys are learning now or doing now, um, you know, if you're able to do that, that's great. Um, in terms of the environment, as I said, uh, normally we have a full house here. We normally have about 12 to 13 people in the control room, um, but we've stripped down. Um, they've moved to a central uh, system for a prompter. So there's one room in, uh, next to us over here, which basically has a setup. And I'll see, actually, I'm gonna see, I'm gonna see if I can take you guys over there really quick. So just give me one second. And so basically what they do is what used to happen is our, our uh, prompter operator used to be in here with us and there would be another prompter operator in with the other show. Now what they do is they have um, two computers in another room. And if you bear with me one sec, I'll take you over there and without interrupting them. But basically you'll see, you'll see basically what they have here is they have a, a computer system here and um, they have a prompt operator here, Hello. Hi, hi. and what they she has everything up in front of her, and basically she goes through and she sees and she does she does playback as well as prompter and stuff like that. She's got a, a foot pedal. She's got um, um, the, uh, the the prompter uh, dial in front of her, so she is doing multiple things. So what you'll notice is what you'll notice is that not only and the funny thing is is we started this just a couple months ago, just um, with before even everything started happening with Corona, it was actually just kind of the evolution of things. So it's not, they're not just having, I don't know, again, if you can see this, playback, playout used to be right in that right-hand position, and then prompter used to be here. Now it's one position in another room. 
And so, you know, they're, they're dialed into the McCurdy panel and we communicate with them. Um, the producers will use a communicator, the director will communicate, hey, this is what the guy, you know, you, you prompt you need to go here, you know, A99 or, you know, whatever, or, hey, you know, playback, you know, play echo. Um, you know, so this way it's the same person and they're multitasking. So again, I'm, I'm going to go back to um, anything that you can do, focus on something, become really good at it. This way, then you show that you can get wherever you um, uh, um, um, internship or something else like that just to get in the door. But then don't limit yourself to just that. Um, learn as much as you can. Find something else to, to build up your not only resume, but, you know, to, 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 to pad your, 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 um, your background because, uh, you know, it just makes you that much more valuable. Uh, so, but. Um, well, I have a question. Uh, go for it. Shoot. So this is. Uh, like a high pressure, like every day, it seems like stress. It depends on the situation, but go ahead. How do you handle that? You know, it, 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 it's funny. It really depends on the situation. And I'll give you an example. I mean, there's times where, uh, you know, there, that it can be cookie cutter. There's times where when you get into the groove and it's really like a synergy between your, any work environment. And so, and, and it's funny, and, and I made this analogy many times with the people that I, when I first started in this room and I started training in this room with the people, and it's hard to explain, and Jordan, if he, I don't know if my son is still on, he can, he can kind of attest to this, but it, it, it's really, you would never know we're, we're actually working on a TV show. There's a lot of camaraderie because we've worked together for years, and um we're constantly joking around and, th and throwing out stuff and, and, and having a good time. And, it, and I'll make this analogy for those who might know what it is and know the show. I'm, a, I'm dating myself here, but the show MASH is the best way to, to, to really explain it. Is we joke around, we have a really good time while the show is going on. But when literally when breaking news happens and the floor drops and basically this rundown that everyone's created for three hours gets thrown out the window, everyone knows their job, they work together, they work very hard and they put their nose to the grindstone. And so we trust each other, we know each other's abilities and stuff like that. So yeah, there, there is, um, there is a, uh, but I guess it goes back to kind of what you said in terms of the pressure. It's, it's in the beginning. Yeah. It's, it's challenging because it, I, I, as I said, I didn't go to school for TV, you know, so when I, and I was trained, I was training in transmission. I know transmission and the everything downstream, but when it came to coming into here and knowing that element, if I have my headset on through this system right here, and I've got these mean, these lights mean that they're all these keys are open. This key's open. Uh, these keys are open. This key's open. Or let's say this live, these are live shots down here. These are the dial ups of the producers coming in. These are from DC. These are um, the director, the TD, the audio engineer, the, the, the line producer. This is um, the floor manager. Uh, this is the Mac ingest. He's rolling. If I have all of these open, and sometimes people, these two guys may be joking. This person might be checking someone in. This person, this is a knock, this is the knock counting us back. And over time, it's very daunting in the beginning because you're not sure who's talking to you unless they specifically say your name. But over time, you really get a feel for it and you kind of funnel everything else out. Um, you know what, you, you, you take bits and pieces of information because if you're leaving hit the director's key open, he's talking to you, he's talking to the TD, he's talking to Chiron, he's talking to the floor manager, he's talking, but you funnel out a lot of the conversation and it's almost like white noise and you just kind of, you get a feel for it. Um, it you just become attuned to it. Um, so it can be high pressure, but everyone's human. I mean, I, I, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, the hours really stink. I'm up at 3 a.m., I'm here by four, you know, the show starts by six. I'm here. I'm only here. Usually we don't have to be here till five, an hour before your show. But because mine's three hours, I'd like to get here early, make sure everything is in what that's supposed to be. And I work with the producers on saying, guy, you know, guys, this is missing. We need to make sure this is here. Is this happening? No. Okay, fine. But, um, you know, I try really hard to, you know, the, what makes the time coming in here is the fact of the people that I work with. And because of that fact, um, 
you know, I, they make it enjoyable and they make it fun, but also they're really open and, oh, you know, and, and this is one thing I'll stress, at least here, when someone makes a mistake, own it immediately. The minute someone has to start doing detective work to find out where the mistake happened and someone's trying to hide it, it just makes you look bad. Um, you know, yesterday I made a mistake. It wasn't a small mistake, but basically, it was, and it was a rookie mistake. I forgot to call something up on an RS. And they're like, where's this guest? And I'm like, and, and I already cleared him. I forgot to put it in an RS. I think, guys, I'm sorry. That was on me. I didn't. Then, you know, within 15 minutes, the producer's like, Jesus, I can't believe I forgot. You know, they may, misspelled something. And the, the anchor's calling him out on it on air. Or, you know, it, it, it happens. You're going to make mistakes. The difference is, how are you going to learn from that mistake? Are you, you know, and, and it, it, you want to try and make sure that the mistakes that you made or make over time are um, you start to get few and far and, and, and further out. Um, you know, and, you know, reliability is is key. You want to make sure that when you take a job, um, that you are early. Um, you want to make sure that you're willing to learn and that you're, you know, you're a yes person. You know, what I can do it, and you. If not, I will. I'm here to learn. I want to do what I can. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a lot of, it's fun. I, you know, it's, it's tough, but it's fun. I mean, listen, there's a lot of other things I'd love to do here, but sometimes it's, it, you know, it, it, it can be a challenge. I, I've been lucky enough to learn from some great people and, uh, yeah, I mean, oh, you know what, let me, um, hang on, let me put this back on. I'm going to, if you guys, do you have any questions while we're in the control? And let's start with that. Oh, all right. Go for it. Oh, no, it's fine. Don't. It's totally fine. Oh, I have a question. Shoot. How do you think, um, like, coming in as an intern, do you think that the everyday process is kind of hard and difficult, or do you think that when they get there that the staff is adaptive and supportive to help with all this new technical stuff that they might not know too much about? Are you talking about the for the intern themselves? Yes. You know, it really depends on it depends on on the environment. Now, I will say this: I I have worked with many people who have worked in other environments, whether it's Fox or Bloomberg or things like that. Okay. I will say here at CNBC, in general, everyone is really supportive, okay. um, only because we hire either full timers or we bring in um freelancers from a lot of the because we've trained them so we so we try to make sure that we do the best job that we can because we've trained them we bring them in um to to either freelance for us and if a position opens up you know and they're doing a fantastic job and we think that they would be a great fit then you know we and they and they desire to be a full-time employee where they're coming in um then yeah have I heard other stories of people, you know, being ch more challenging? Yes. Um, here in the, this building, I have not heard that. In other environments, I have heard that. The only thing you can do is do the best that you can and control what yeah. you can control. And that is being um, as adaptive and as open to listening and, uh, you know, as possible. Um, as I said, showing up early, um, making sure and, 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 this, you know, brings up a small thing. It's just that make sure that you, if you have an internship or if you have an interview or if you have something else, make sure that if you're not sure how to get somewhere, do a, do a dry run, make, make, you know, drive or take yeah. a train or something else like that. If you have the opportunity, show up. Mm -hmm. And if, if you're supposed to meet someone by 10, be there by 945, be there 15 or 20 minutes early, make sure that you show that effort because I'm telling you, it, your reputation is key. It, yes. it, you only make a first impression once, um, you know, because uh, what will happen is it's just like Yelp with a restaurant. Yeah. The minute, and, I, and I'm absolutely serious, is that if you guys, you know, if, if someone um, has a bad reputation or they were late or there's something else, because we had a situation where someone was supposed to come and shadow mm -hmm. and they were an hour and a half late. And I already had someone over my shoulder saying, if that were me, I would have just told them to turn around and go home not even to bother coming in. Wow. And so it happens. And, and so, yeah. I, I, so what I'm trying to stress is, don't just think that you, you guys are taking the first step and I think that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. But how hungry are you? How much do you want it? 
Mm-hmm. And, and so what I'm saying is that's why I'm saying be open, be open to listening, no matter who the person is, and just phase out or, or, or treat it like white noise. Any, um, any uh, personality traits or anything like that, just say, listen, I'm just here to learn whatever you can offer. I would really appreciate it. And, and the more you're willing to do that, then usually people are pretty open. I, you know, so, uh, you know, I, I don't know if that, I hope I answered your question. Yeah, you did. Fun. Thank you. Absolutely. I have a question. Shoot. So a lot of the students will, will look and see that they want to go to the big networks and get an internship. But I feel like those are really competitive that everybody wants to look at those and go there. So how do I, well, not me, but them, make themselves look better opposed to all the other people that are still like trying out and sending in their information the same way? Like, what are you looking for? What makes me special? There's a couple of things that um, I can suggest. First off, if you're lucky enough, and, and I will say it's very competitive, is trying for an internship. Don't try at just one place. Cast a wide net. Um, if you're able to hit a smaller market, I know some people who started at News 12, and they started off there for a little bit. And it, you know, it anything that gives you experience and you can put on your resume to show that you've either gone from school right into a job or, or an internship at a, a like you know whether it's News 9 or uh, WPIX or whatever just to be able to get in, get some experience, even if it's, you know, small, then from there you're able to build and go in because that's what they look for. They look for some form of experience, some form of um, uh, no gaps in, in your resume, but, all, but you know, anything that you can do to get yourself in the door. If you're looking to just shoot for the big, the big networks, um, it's going to be a challenge. I, I, I would say in general, it's going to be a challenge, but it's going to be a challenge only because there's only a certain amount of jobs. And, and, and I'll give you an example. Like here, it, it, is, it can be challenging because once those jobs are filled, there's not a lot of wiggle room. Um, and so that's where freelancers are key. And that's where your reputation of showing up early, being adaptive, and, and doing other things becomes really big because, hey, you know, because I know people who make a really good money just being freelancers and they can make their, make their schedules anyway. I mean, they do MLB, they come here. So let's say as an example, and it's going to be tough. And I'm, I'm assuming either some of you live at home or something. They work the overnights at, at other networks. So let's say they're done by, you know, or, or they work the afternoon shift. So they'll come here. Let's say I'm sick. I call out sick. Hey, Patrick called out sick. We need someone to come in at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Well, I can come in at 4 a.m., but I'm covering my shift at Bloomberg and I have to be there by 11. Not a problem. So now you've got your pay to cover the shift. So you're freelancing, just covering this. And then either I've, I know the people will sleep in their cars for about an hour before they start their shift at another, at another place. It, 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 it's challenging, but once you build that reputation you know what this person's always on time this person knows what they're talking about they're always great it, it goes a long way and when you build that reputation word spreads it's a small world where people have crisscrossed into other networks and it doesn't go by managers a lot of times it goes by let's say um the td or the director here they know people in other places so hey you know what what's this person like? And you think, you know, can you speak? Can you talk to them? You know, can you, can you recommend them? And so it word spreads. It's very interesting. It's a small world. And so you want to make sure that you do the best that you can to make sure that um, you always leave things on good terms. Never, no matter how frustrating something can be, burn a bridge because um, it will bite you. Um, I've seen it done uh, by other people and they're, I, I, they're not blackballed, but it just, it's, it's not a good precedent you want to set. So uh, yes, even if a situation's bad and you have to leave a particular environment, thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. And then you just walk out the door and you, and, and if you go to another environment, you never speak badly about it. You learn, that's you basically, you take it as a learning experience and you learn from it and you, and you, you just like, not, you know what, it just didn't work out. And that's, you know, so I'm, I'm going to take jobs here and there and wherever else I can find them. And that's it. It becomes a really challenging thing when word 
of mouth spreads. And so you don't want that hanging over you or someone un undercutting you um, when you're looking for that next job or trying to find a job. Did that answer your question? Absolutely. Who's got a question? Anybody? I have a question. Shoot. So when applying for an internship, let's say over there, mm -hmm. um, the, in, the process of the application, is there some, especially now with the pandemic going on, and I know there's not, I'm gonna assume there's not a lot of people um, like working physically there. Yeah, there's about 90% uh, of the people have been stripped out of the building. So it's really basic technical, go ahead. Yeah, so, when applying for an internship, do you know if there's somebody actually looking at the resumes at the moment or is it mostly like computer um, generalized or is it kind of both? No, as far as I, and, and I, I don't know everything about this, but I know specifically two people that he was one, but she brought on someone else because it is competitive to try and get in because we, we do paid internships. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it is competitive. And I, I know that they, um, there are two people specifically that do um, accept and, and, and go through the resumes and uh, will then in turn, I, I don't know if they specifically make the choices for who is picked for those internships, but because I, I think that they, I know that they have a heavy say in it. So they go through them and they do the interviews and stuff like that. And then from there, I think that they, you know, they have other people that I, I'm a larger group that kind of um, makes that decision. But um, yes, there are, two specific people here that do go through the interview, uh, excuse me, the, the, the resumes. It's not um, something that is just computer generated. Gotcha. Okay. I was just curious. Sure. Thank you. Anybody else? No. Okay. That's fine. Oh, um, I, Andrea, what I can do wait, is hang I was, on one second. I'm no, sorry. go ahead. Okay. I was just wondering where you're located because I know like getting to the city getting to 30 walk is like not that great right now but yeah no we're actually um we're actually uh right next to the Unilever building um up the road from Fort Lee so okay. when you go up you know route 80 you're going to get off and you kind of make a left at the at the George Washington Bridge and we're on the New Jersey side okay. so CNBC has their headquarters um and actually the knock for NBC Universal is upstairs it's so it's a large a large facility just wondering. Yeah, no, it's cool. We used to have a small building when I first started with the company over 20 years ago. There was a small building. Actually, Telemundo has it now. Uh, when we moved out, Telemundo moved in. So Telemundo is now, uh, uh, they're right next to the George Washington Bridge on the New Jersey side in Fort Lee. So, and they're another option. They're, they're another opportunity too. I mean, they're, they're, they're constantly hiring. I mean, don't just limit yourself on, um, on anywhere you can get experience uh, because you never know where it could lead. Um, as I said, News 12, um, 11, there, any one of the sports networks, I mean, even uh, depending on, on if they're hiring or not, I mean, QVC, I mean, I know they're out in state college or by state college, I think it is, but I mean, or no, they're in Pennsylvania, but not that far out. That's Weather Channel I'm thinking of. Uh, but I mean, it's like, you know, it, there's, there's just so many opportunities. Don't limit yourself. It could eventually lead to, if you want bigger and better things, not just you, but, but everybody. Um, but don't limit yourself on trying. Just cast a really wide net, throwing your resume anywhere that anybody will look at it. And this way then, hey, you know what? Let's say you get two or three people that are interested or, or businesses that are interested. Hey, we want to bring you in you know, for, for Chiron. And we want to bring you in for you know, to TD or something else like that. Um, you know, that's when uh, you say, you know what, I can come in this day, but you know what, I'm, I'm working for Bloomberg, so I'll be there tomorrow. I can go, I can come tomorrow or something like that. And it, it just shows the competitiveness that you're in demand and you know what, and you keep your schedule um, organized and everything else like that. So it, it you know, you're gonna, it, it just makes you look better. So just, um, cast a wide net don't just shoot one or two and don't take no for an answer and if you if you start getting if you get no's don't get discouraged if it's something you really want to do there are classes you can continue to take there are i, I think there's one it's up here in like uh 
buddy of mine was telling me about it because I think he was sending one of the other interns there. But there's like a video um, uh, course that you can take. And it actually really, it, a lot of people take it and they, and they really like it a lot. And they think it kind of helps with uh, TDing and some other things like that. It's up here, not in Hackensack, or maybe it's by Hackensack. So there's so many opportunities outside of just if, if you, you've kind of done everything you can do where you're at and you want to get experience in other places. So um, just keep trying, keep expanding and, and uh, your, your knowledge base because so, uh, it, it'll, it'll happen. It just takes a lot of, a lot of effort. And once you, but once you break in, once you get your foot in the door, once you make that good reputation that they're very reliable and everything else like that, boy, I tell you, finding reliable people it may sound like it's an easy thing. It's not, it's not, you know, so it, it you know, so I, I, and, and I kind of had this discussion a little bit with your teacher uh, yesterday. And, and so um, just do the best that you can, but, you know, make sure that you, 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 uh, you make that effort and you show them they're making an effort. Uh, so. And then you say you want to show us one more thing. If yeah, I'm going to try. I'm going to see. I'm going to see if I can go out and uh, give me one second. So I, I don't know where are we. We have one show that's on the set right now, so I can't. And, and the way the cameras are facing, I can't really take you out there without it disrupting it. Uh, but I'm going to see if I can take you. I'll give you an idea. Hold on one second for you guys, if you want to see. So this is our. This is our newsroom. And with this newsroom, uh, you know what I'll do is I'll take you upstairs really quick and it'll give you a better idea. I'm trying to be quiet because Kramer is on the air. So this is our central news desk. Um, this is where uh, the generalized news uh, editors, uh, in terms of editorial staff, sit. Now, the, if you look over here, all these empty desks and a couple of people that are here, um, these are broken down by different shows, um, pods of different shows, et cetera. But as you can see, mostly everyone is gone and usually working from home. Um, if you give me one second, I'm gonna climb up so I'm not in their way. But if you look uh, in the distance, that show is going on right now, that's Squawk on the Street, and that's Kramer who's sitting with his back to us right now. And I'm going to take us downstairs. And what I'm doing is, um, this is our transmission. This is where, hello, Stephanie. This is a class. Say hi, everybody. Hello. Hi. <laughs> so um, it's actually for a college, for a first uh for a school, a university. So um, this is the, system, the area that I was talking about. Um, this is our kind of nervous system for the building. This is where all the feeds come through and they're QC'd by these professionals right here. And um, each, of these, <laughs> each, each of these stations here um, are broken down by this person. So Stephanie here has everything broken down here in front of her. So this way then it's broken. It's, it, <laughs> So they, she's got as, as basically similar to the setup in, in the control room that I showed you. This is basically um, kind of a, a, a kind of a request for all this, uh, the um, the guests that are coming into the building. This is how she cues these see things. Um, Carl is at home right now, but he's a lot of the anchors are doing their hits from home. Um, but basically everything in front of her, like these are a lot of the visuals for the the remotes that are coming into the building. And as I said, they're they're numbered. So REM 106, 107, et cetera, they keep going through. And then um, Heather has a very similar setup, but just modified and tweaked to her um, prefer preference. And then uh, Joe as well. So, I mean, and then there's monitors all along the back wall here. Um, each, each station has, I don't know if you can see the green and red buttons, that's, a, that's connectivity to, the, to a router. So this way then they can control um, making switches coming and going from the building. This is a centralized router. Um, basically, let's see how I can describe it. So basically, let's say there we have, um, and I'm, it used to be 10, then it became 12 lines coming in from Washington, D.C. But Washington, D.C. has 
Washington DC has um, hundreds of sources going into their building. So what it is, is they have remote sources as well. So what we need to do is we need to find out what the remote source is. So then we would come over here and then we would punch it into the system and then we would be able to bring it into the building. So whether it's the, the president is speaking or whether it's um, you know one of our reporters that is in the field, and um, actually, you know, they'll take into the other control just quickly to so you can see what what's going on over there. Uh, one second. All right. So as so as you can see, me drive for a bit, then Jim, So as you can see, a lot of the people here, they're they're all separated by over six feet, but basically um, this way, then they can still do their jobs, executive producers, producers, the person off to the left, I, I don't know if I showed you, I could see him basically, he's me, he's a technical production supervisor. And um, so he would basically bring everything in once transmission QCs it and, and allows it to be you know, released. And then they, we can take it, put it up. So this way it can be taken live to air. Um, and let's see i don't know is there I, now is there any questions from you guys or any other questions from you guys in terms of if there was there something you wanted to see closer was there a question about what you saw so how long well i guess i'll just interrupt then how long um from when you're recording it to when you're checking everything is it going on air Oh, you mean oh, oh, you're talking about like once the once the shot comes in, how yes. how what's the? It, honestly, we had a the, the uh, I don't know if you can see this. So we had the CEO Ned Siegel on from uh, he's the CEO of Twitter. He was the last shot, but he was on a conference his conference call for his 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 um company. It really depends. Like literally, by the time I got the sh and, and a lot of the guests and stuff, they're not coming into the studio anymore. So a lot of the shots were taken, believe it or not, through Skype and Zoom. And so um, this one we had to take through Skype and we kept on calling and calling and calling, but because he was on his conference call. And so literally by the time I got, I got the shot and caught him up and checked him in, we took him to air within 10 seconds. And so, <laughs> excuse me. So it, it really depends. And, and I wasn't thrilled with the, I wasn't thrilled with the framing because I'm kind of a stickler for framing and for lighting and all that. But with Skype and Zoom and stuff like that, we've kind of thrown it out of the window a little bit and we just do the best we can. We've again adapted. And so sometimes it looks like one of our anchors is like talking to a giant head. And so I try to, you know, I try to do the best I can, but there's times where usually we open up, a, let's say it's a, a um, let's say it's a, a fiber line that's coming in and we book the line coming into us, we usually book it five minutes before the live day. So that gives us five minutes, guests is in the chair, we check them in, make sure everything's good, and then we usually take them, depending if the anchors are chatty and they're dragging their feet because they're talking about current events, it could be 10 minutes, could be 15 minutes, but sometimes it could be 30 seconds. Sometimes it could be literally 10 seconds. It really, but that's, that's an extreme case and it doesn't happen often, but yes, it could be. All right. All right. Do you guys have any more questions? No. All right. Can I, I do? Mean, if you guys think of something later. Ask your teacher. She can text or email me. I have no problem answering questions. Uh, you know, whatever you guys want. If you saw something, you know what? I should have asked that question just to shoot her a note. Absolutely. I want to take a group photo though. It's the the mom, mom, mom thing in me though. So turn those cameras on. You know it was coming. I have a question. I have a question. Oh, is it Gina? Well, no. Wait. Who's that's going to question? Tanasia. Tanasia. Oh, yeah. Can you ask a question? Go ahead. Yeah. Is every like does your job get overwhelming sometimes, or you just um, deal with whatever I comes think, with it? I. You know what it is. I think. In the beginning, it does seem overwhelming. I will say in the, when you first get into a position like, and I'll give an example, um, whether it was transmission or, you know, in, in the position I'm working in now, it can be overwhelming. It can be 
daunting. You're like, geez, there's so many moving parts. How the heck am I going to keep track of all this? Um, all you can do is trust in um, what you know really well and then try to learn something new each time. You're, again, you're going to make a mistake. Just do the best you can. It's like, that was on me. I got it. And you learn from that mistake to move forward so it doesn't happen again. And so it's just like anything else. It's just like going to school. It's just building blocks. It's just making sure that with each um, time that something comes up, you know, in the beginning, I, I remember when I started in this position uh, and I just, I remember being like, God, wide eyed. I was just like, okay, I got my sheet. I got everything right here. I got to make sure, okay, I got to make sure that I keep up with swapping out the REMs and stuff like that. But you got to be careful because sometimes being overprepared, you may, you may make a mistake. And so you just, can it be high pressure? Yeah, I mean, or, or, or daunting? Yeah, it can be. But I've gotten into a, I've been doing this for so long and I'm with the people that I work with and, and I've gotten the confidence that I'm good at what I do. Um, and listen, you know, we joke around that when I'm out, you know, they have freelancers come in and they have them do their jobs. But what makes me feel good is that um, when I come back, uh, when I'm out, like say I'm on vacation or something like that, producers like, oh my God, I can kiss you. I'm so glad you're back. I mean, it, it's just small things to make their job easier that I've picked up on since I'm here. And I, I do things that are not really in my job description that are a little extra to help them out. And so, but you have to, you know, you, you, that's something that comes over time. In the beginning, it's just really getting to know the basics. Once you know the basics, you building blocks. You just build on top of that until you really get that comfort level, that sense of confidence in your abilities. Um, not cockiness, because you're still going to make mistakes. Um, it's just confidence in, in what in your abilities and what you what you know that you can do, and then going from there. I, I think that I. Yeah, you got it. Okay, cool. Anybody else? You're on mute. I got you. Well then turn those cameras on and smile, baby. I'm gonna take a photo. Uh, Let's go. Professor, we're not we not we're not ready, Professor. You know the drill. <laughs> I'm in my bed. That's all right. Let's go. All right, on the count of three. One Two, three, beautiful. All right, Patrick, thank you so much for hanging out. Jordan even got in the photo at the end. <laughs> Goodbye. Not a problem. Uh, Anytime, again, if we'll you guys have questions, you. by all means, pass it along. I have no problem asking any questions. Hopefully right, we get just... to come visit you once this is all over. I'm sorry? I said, hopefully we all get to come visit you once this is all over. Yes, absolutely. You guys, I'm, I'm here. So if, when everything's uh, all set and done, uh, we'd love to have you guys come in. And I can show you in person what this place looks like and kind of how, you know, it works, you know, pushing buttons, et cetera. Thank you so much. Absolutely. You. Enjoy your day, guys. Be safe. Bye, Daddy. Bye, <laughs> Bye guys. Bye.